We are finally out of the construction phase of our home renovation and have been making some major, pretty progress. This week we're starting a new project, DIYing our kitchen cabinetry from scratch. And I think it's gonna be easier than what we've been led to believe. Thanks to Chime for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Over the past year, I have experienced firsthand how costly a home renovation can be and how easy it is to lose track of what you're spending without a solid budget and clarity around where your money's going. And a great way to keep your eyes on your budget is by using Chime. Chime is a financial app and debit card that helps Americans manage, save, and spend their money. Some of the Chime features that I love is the ability to pay people instantly. You don't need to download any extra apps and there are no fees for you or the person that you're sending money to which in my case really helps purchasing materials for our home renovation and paying contractors with ease or if i need to take cash out chime has over 60,000 fee-free and network atms that i have access to and i love the security with knowing what's going on with my money instantly chime allows you to turn on notifications so that you get instant transaction alerts and daily account balances they also offer 24 7 live customer support in the in-app via email or over the phone and i love all of the fees that chime doesn't charge applying for chime is free there's no opening deposit or minimum balance there's no international fees no annual membership no monthly and service fees and no late fees you can even get paid early by setting up direct deposit and get your paycheck up to two days early. So you guys can learn more about Chime by clicking the link in my description box below. And again, thanks to Chime for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Welcome back. When I'm filming this, we are still waiting on them to texturize the sheetrock. Now this room is done because we did level five, but there are certain parts of the majority of the house isn't done because we wanted to save on money. Obviously level five can be quite expensive. So I just did that in areas where it gets low sunlight, which is the living room here, the ceiling, the dining room, but not behind the cabinetry in the kitchen and not the addition. Uh, so we're gonna do an orange peel back there, scraped orange peel. I have not done that yet. I've still been waiting. So Romeo and I have been trying to rack our brains and find every job possible to do outside of the house. We can't pick up the paper to do the floors, which is really the first job we wanna do. I've been working on the bathroom makeover, but I can't go in there yet. So I've come to a conclusion that there is one project that I can start on that doesn't require me to physically be inside for very long. Welcome to the kitchen. I guess this can be considered the first episode in the kitchen makeover. When I made a plan of what rooms to tackle in the house first once we were able to get back inside and do the things, uh, it was the floors, the guest bathroom so that when we move in we actually have a bathroom to use, and the kitchen. Those were gonna be the first area. So I was like, okay, what can I do in those spaces? Well, I could build my cabinetry. I want them to feel custom. I want them to be custom. And I would love to tackle them myself. I've gotten pretty good at woodworking. I'm pretty meticulous and, and, and detail oriented. So I'm thinking I can accomplish this and why not try? So we're gonna have cabinetry all along this wall, all underneath the windows, on the sides, with uppers on the windows and also over here in this kind of like little part here. Obviously we're gonna have an island in the center, which we're also gonna build from salvaged material from the porch. So we need to build cabinetry for the island and then we're gonna use some salvaged material from the porch like the columns. But for now, I wanna focus on the bottom cabinetry. I can take the measurements now that the sheetrock is up. I can have the boxes ready so when they're done, <laughs> I can move them in and put them where they need to go. So I'm gonna do a rough sketch the kitchen walls so that I can get the dimensions of where the windows are, how long the walls are, how tall the walls are. Romeo's very excited about our kitchen. <laughs> you're gonna do so much cooking for me. I'm gonna make it really pretty, but you're gonna be the cook. Okay. That's always been our deal. So we're gonna start with overall dimensions. So let's measure, can you help me? I'll measure the whole wall first, so from side to side. We have 211 across and deep. 26 and a half, 137 tall. So the main house, I always say 12 foot, but they're actually not quite 12 foot tall. They're more like, what is that, 11 and a half, 137? Even 
following along from the beginning, you know that I want to do these like boxed windows. And we boxed out, sometimes you see boxed windows and the, and the window unit will kind of like stick outside of the house. Well, I, we didn't want to stick out of the house. Uh, so we built the wall out so that they come into the house and we had the room to do it. So I really wanted this as a purely, this is like a stylistic feature. So the boxed windows are gonna sit 10 inches in and I'm gonna be able to put, it's like gonna be a shelf and I'm gonna be able to put things. <laughs> it's gonna be reminiscent of the other room when we toured the house. When you walked into the house, you turned right and you went through a thicker kind of opening because it had two closets on each side. And when you walked through, it had this really rich beadboard and those windows in the inspiration picture looked just like that moment. Since we took that wall down for the living room, I wanted to bring that moment back somehow and use the salvaged beadboard, the rich tone beadboard from that space in these windows. So they're gonna be boxed out, then they're gonna be trimmed out with our original trim that was throughout the house, which is five inches. So I've got 45 inches to the window, and then the window itself, 28 and a half, is 58. Our refrigerator will be here. We have a 36 inch Mila refrigerator. It's a French door refrigerator, and it's all the appliances in here are going to be panel ready. So they're gonna look like cabinetry. And then the oven is stainless steel mixed with a brass. And I want cabinetry in the kitchen to go all the way to the ceiling. All the way to the ceiling cabinetry makes it feel like a designer kitchen. I just don't like the shelves or space above kitchen cabinets. It's just like a stylistic preference, I guess. So above the refrigerator is gonna be more cabinetry. So that's gonna be a wall that kind of goes up here. Then there's gonna be cabinetry lower cabinetry here below the window and then our oven then it's going to continue with lower cabinets all the way to the wall and then on this side of the window we're going to have upper cabinets so there's going to be a space you know countertop space kind of above it and then the cabinets are going to recede back and go all the way to the ceiling. I already have tons of sketches. This was kind of one of my rough sketches from the very beginning of how I wanted it to be laid out. So now that I have all of my measurements, I have a lot of planning to do tonight. Figure out exactly what I want in terms of the boxes and how wide they're going to be. Um, and then we can get started building tomorrow. We're gonna head to the hardware store and pick out our uh, cabinet ready plywood and pick up all of the tools. I have a whole list of like supplies that I need. So let's head there. Let's get everything that we need and hope that they can deliver all the plywood tomorrow. So they sell cabinet grade plywood in the two by four sheets like this. Easier to put in your car, more expensive to create your cabinetry. So they sell it in the four foot by eight foot large sheets of plywood like this. We're doing three quarter inch thick cabinets and I'm doing it all the way around the sides the bottom and the back are all three quarter you could opt to do a half inch or a quarter inch on the back but I don't want to I want it to be really solid so we're getting 20 of these sheets delivered tomorrow and they are 64.88 each it's pretty right mm -hmm. what's well, gonna be painted anyways but still Okay, so shall we attempt to make some cabinets? I have watched so many tutorials on how to do this. So I'm gonna be using a circular saw to cut all of our sides. We're also going to be joining all of the sides of our cabinetry boxes to make the carcass out of, I hate that word. Can we not use that word? I know that they use that word, but I don't like it. That's the last time I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna call it a box. <laughs> We're gonna be joining the box together with pocket holes. I actually got this pocket hole jig at an estate sale. Hello. Saving on budget for sure. Since our sanded plywood we're using for the cabinetry is three quarters of an inch thick, I'm gonna be using one and a quarter pocket hole screws. So I got a big box of those. Speed square, a square just to make sure that our box is perfectly square. I have a drill. I have this new kind of guide. This is what I feel like a tool that I've been lacking in my woodworking, especially when using a circular saw, is to keep a straight cut and to do it really well. So I got this, I'm gonna try it out. I've never used it before, I'm using that. And I have some clamps and some wood glue. I just have to find it. 
and wig glue. So last night I actually worked on my measurements for the cabinets like more in depth. After we did all of the measurements for the actual walls, we're still taking this one cabinet at a time and continuing to measure as we go. And everyone's cabinets are gonna be different based on what you want or in the size of your space and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my pieces and then I'm just gonna show you which parts are what. Then we'll move on to the face frame to really finish it out because I have a very specific style cabinet I'm going for. Okay, I'm not gonna uh, lie to you guys. That was actually really difficult to get these cut exactly to measure. I felt like that was gonna be the easy part and that ended up being the hard part. I'm just being super particular and I'm using some new tools like that guide. I'm getting used to it. I finally got it. Basically making our spice drawer rack. I want two of those on each side of the oven. We have five pieces. I have two sides, and then I have the bottom, and then I have the back. Now, I'm gonna do the back out of the three quarter inch plywood, um, but you can also save money by using quarter inch plywood. And then I have another support for the top. So we have five pieces. If you guys have seen any of my old videos where I've built furniture, like my patio chairs or my entryway table, see me use a pocket hole maker and it's a super strong way to attach boards at a 90 degree angle really easy once you get the hang of it basically this jig they call it a jig um, that helps you create the holes for screws to go into so first we have to set this little collar to tell the bit where to stop we're gonna be screwing three quarter inch wood to three quarter inch wood so we need to bring that to three quarter inches comes with this little handy guide then we're going to make sure the collar is tight. Now we can add the bit to our drill. We also need to set this measurement as well. So I need to bring this down to three quarters. Right there. Then you're going to slide your wood in. Press this. You may have to tighten this as well. Sometimes you have to, but this looks okay. And then we're going to be screwing into two of these placements. You kind of pick and choose where you want your holes or how far apart they want you, them to be. Since this is uh, a four inch board, I'm going to do A and C. I'm just going to drill our holes. And that was satisfying. We have two pocket holes. We're going to do the same thing on the other side and then on some other sides of the boards as well. We have the luxury with cabinets that sit next to each other to not see any of the pocket holes. So basically when all the cabinets go together and they're all sitting next to each other, you won't ever see them. For the cabinet construction itself, we need pocket holes in the support, the little piece for the top and the bottom and the back. I'm going to be doing a face frame on my cabinets. So I'm also going to put a few pocket holes on the exterior of the side panels. I'm putting pocket holes on everything. And ideally you want them about four to five inches apart, or I guess it depends on the size of your cabinet. And just do them on the worst side because that's going to be what's hidden. So now it's time to put it together. This is where we need our one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws and clamps. Clamps are always your best friend, I have realized. So we have some bigger clamps. I have some a, a larger one than this and smaller ones and some wood glue. But I don't know why, why I'm nervous, I don't know. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces. This is side one, let's say. And pocket holes are along one side of the back side of the side uh, for the face frame. So I'm gonna put that face down because that's gonna be on the outside of our, our box. Then we've got our back. So I'm gonna put a bead of wood glue here. We'll set this part up. So I'm gonna make sure that we're doing everything really square too. So that didn't work. <laughs> we don't know how to get it like, the clamps to hold it at a 90 degree angle. Um, without clamping a 90 degree angle to it, like something like this, but I've ordered these and they arrive, the delivery arrived, and they are 90 degree angle clamps. I can just figure out how they work. Oh, oh wow. So much better? That is brilliant. Well, yeah. Well, we should have that. that first. I'm so glad I ordered those. Shoot, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a 90 degree clamp. I mean, neither. <laughs> Is that not brilliant or what? That is too cool. 
that that's doing that. And it's right, like I double checked it. It's 90 degrees. We use our screws and it comes, the pocket hole jig will come with a long uh, bit to help you get the screws into the holes. Dang, I haven't seen you do a DIY like this in years. I know, huh? It kind of feels good. trial and error piece. Now that you got one together, you can just cut a bunch of wood and then... Yeah, it, especially the depth. If they're all the same depth. It looks like good wood too, I think. It does. It, feel, it, it feels like feel good cheap. wood. Wait for our home to show to level up the, the floor and then it'll sit you know three and a half inches god these are heavy three and a half inches like like that and then our countertops on top that's why we didn't do a topper mm -hmm. like a plywood on top because our countertops our soapstone is going to go here <sighs> now face frame so i got some wood some one by three wood which is really the actual size is three quarter depth by two and a half inches wide. Based on my research, the face frame hangs over, so past the side of the cabinet, so this way, a quarter of an inch. So if it hangs that way a quarter of an inch, and my wood is three quarters of an inch, that's an inch, an inch and a half coming this way. Basically trying to decide if I need to cut that wood down or not, which I can't. Okay, so here are the boards. I'm a visual person, so I'm gonna ask my handy dandy, uh, amazing partner in crime to come <laughs> over here and hang this. I hang this. <laughs> can you come hold this so I can step back and look? I kind of have to look at it with another one next to it. Let's see. So like right. So that's what two would look like next to each other. I'm gonna look at some inspiration. Some of my inspiration pictures. I can't visualize it. I, I think I want the drawers to, to be flush. They're not gonna sit on top of the frame. I want them to kind of sit inside. I think, I, I think either way, if I change my mind on that, I think we still need to cut them down. So I'm gonna cut them down to two inches. Measuring for a face frame is something that no one online ever tells you. And I'm thinking maybe it's because every thing is different. One thing I could have done is this bottom shelf could be higher. I could have attached it, um, you know, an inch higher or depending on because you'd like your face frame edge the this part the the top of the face frame to sit at the top of the, the shelf because you don't want there to be a lip there because then you would hit it every time you would try and take something out i could just have mine hang down you know and then my toe kick is smaller or lift my cabinets up more or <laughs> All these things that you have to think about. That's one thing I've learned I want to do better is the bottom. Since you want it to hang over on each side a quarter of an inch, it's going. the measurement's going to be a half inch wider. So I need two at 32. Me two at 12? Let's, let me be the guinea pig. <laughs> and I'll tell you if that was right. 32. Another 32. 
and two 12s. <laughs> nope. I messed up. Where did I go wrong? Not the measurement that I need. I cannot do math to save my life. 13? What's 17 minus 5? 12! Where did I go wrong? No, why did I minus 5? Okay, don't listen. Okay, so overall measurement plus a half inch minus the width of each of these ports. Oh, I minus 5 instead of 4. It's not 5. Why did I minus 5? I think I was thinking it was 2.5 still. Okay, regroup. I need two 13s. Okay, I'm back with 13s. <laughs> That makes a lot more sense, McKenna. Pocket holes in the shorter ones, which are called the rails, I believe. <laughs> you always need at least two pocket holes and everything because otherwise it'll the boards will turn on you. Okay, so we have our two sides. And then this one will go here. This one will go here. A little bit blue. Voila! Okay, full disclosure, we will, I mean, I tried to do it as perfect as I could, but there's a little bit of a ridge here where they meet up, but we could sand after they're there, done, before we paint, we're painting all these, we could sand that down perfectly flush. Wow. Wow? Looks so good, babe. Just gotta make sure that that hangs over a quarter of an inch. Why do you want it to hang over? Um, basically, they ha what I've read is they hang over so that when the uh, cabinets sit next to each other, they're, it's more of a straighter edge. Just uh, in case anything on the cabinets are off. I don't know, maybe it just finishes it out better. They all said to, so. And then that's why we have our pocket holes here. Three, I did three of them on each side. So that it's just not just glue. I've seen people just do it with glue. And I was like, ooh, it little worries me a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Feels expensive and heavy. Does it? Oh, it's really heavy. I mean, it's definitely heavier because we did this a solid back instead of a quarter inch back. First one always takes the longest and I've learned, I've learned a lot. So the bottom is definitely a change I'm going to make, but everything else is coming up. I'm getting better. Okay. Tomorrow we will make six more. <laughs> of making cabinetry and they're coming out so well. I'm continuing to improve my skills and get better and better and better at it. Even though each cabinet is different in terms of measurements, I'm kind of figuring out ways to just like tools, the right combination of tools and you get better at everything the more you do them. I'm gonna get really good with the last one I'm gonna make <laughs> for sure. Nothing is screwed in. This is just like, let's build them. Let's wait for the contractor work to be done and then we will paint and install and things like that. I did build the support in the bottom and what the cabinets are actually gonna sit on. We're gonna level them, make sure they're plumb and square together and, and do a lot of things, but we're making them. I asked my mom if I'm doing an okay job, a good job at making them. She goes, yeah. I wanna DIY, but I wanna do it well. You know what I mean? So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload new renovation videos every Sunday here and also two times a week over on my vlog channel. So more behind the scenes, shopping videos, thrift shopping. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you guys again next Sunday. Bye guys. Cabinet, uh, cabinet face. So we're gonna, what, why am I blanking on, on the name of it? Um, Paneled! <laughs>